to talk about today that uh, our data center went completely dark. Probably the scariest day um, in my career um, at that company. So just to uh, set it up a little bit for you, we were a startup of about 35 people, um, 20 people were in development uh, before we were acquired by JDA Software. Uh, and we went a fully integrated DevOps organization, which means that uh, we didn't have any people uh, dedicated to operations. Everyone who was in development was also in ops. And we only had one part-time IT person who was responsible for anything on the networking stack and the OS level, so patching or, or something like that. Everyone else who was in development was responsible for not just doing development work, but also not going to blind myself, that's excellent. Um, so everyone who was in development was also responsible for running and maintaining the service that we were providing to um, our customers. So a little bit about uh, what we were doing in terms of technology. We were a uh, employer to employee uh, service that um, we were providing, again, a startup. Um, some of our customers were really uh, small boutique healthcare organizations, and we also had some very large um, customers who were big retailers with up to 20,000 employees, um, as well as some public service organizations in the U.S., again, very large. Um, for some of our customers, the service that we provided was uh, an add-on nice to have, and for some of them, it was a really critical part of uh, their business. So we also had any kind of permutation of, of these combinations um, in, in what they're doing. Um, so, in terms of uh, some of the balanced conversations that we had had at, uh, at Vortex, we um, always were very cost conscious, obviously being a startup, so we always try to be on, a, on the right side of reasonable, but just by a hair when we talk about redundancy. So, um, just to kind of summarize it in one sentence, we were, um, we were flying by the seat of our pants, but in a, in a somewhat controlled fashion. Um, so uh, uh, that's kind of the, the setup of, of what we were doing at the time this happened um, and, uh, and you know, what we were providing. Um, we had decided that we weren't going to have a geographically replicated service. And this was again for, for two reasons. One of them being cost. Obviously this is expensive. Um, some of you who regularly look at your hosting bills will know that that kind of stuff is, is does that out um, on a monthly cost. And also, um, part of our kind of competitive advantage for what we were providing as a service relied on some very carefully timed operations, which if they had to be replicated, was going to really affect or really have this um, competitive advantage in the marketplace. So we decided that we weren't going to have a geographically replicated solution. The dev, the dev organization that we had was based out of Toronto, and we also have a couple of people in Miami, um, and this will become important later, so keep that in mind. Um, our data center at the time was also in Miami, so again, important, um, keep that in mind. Uh, and uh, um, uh, that's kind of the, the setup for, for what happened that day. Um, <laughs> So uh, the day that this happens is a beautiful sunny day in Toronto and uh, I am hopping in a cab, uh, at the end of the work day I'm hopping in a cab and I get a call from our support person, so frontline support, saying uh, our production environment is down. Something I forgot to mention is that um, we run a multi-tenant, uh, truly data commingled environment. So we have 100 plus customers, so if one of our customers is down, everyone is down. So it's a really big deal. Um, so I get a call from support saying uh, the production environment is down, uh, and uh, you know, he tells me a couple of details, and then he says, and there is a bit of a twist. I can't get to the environment, so I can't RDP to it. The VPN tunnel, you're going to hear the story of a VPN tunnel that's haunted. This VPN tunnel was dead. It was just blank. It was like I can't even like I can't even get a response. There's no RDP sessions. It's uh, the VPN tunnel is down. Um, so I'm like, well, that's kind of interesting because it's never happened before. Like our environment, um, you know, sorry to admit, has been down before, but something that actually took the VPN tunnel down with it has not happened before. Um, so that's kind of an interesting twist. A uh, further interesting twist is that at the time I am eight and a half months pregnant and I'm actually in a cab um, to get to a hospital so that I can have the hospital tour of, you know, what's going to happen. Um, and uh, in a true DevOps fashion, since I already have one child, I've decided I've done this month before, it's going to be just fine. I don't need anything else besides the hospital tour. 
So I get a call from support, I hang up, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to call the person on call. There's, you know, the lucky guy who's always on call, so I pick up the phone, and I call the person um, who's on call, and somehow the person who's on call that day is one of the guys who's from our Miami office. So I uh, set the ring, and then his um, cell phone goes from this, like, really weird dead phone line to really busy, and that, that phone line, again, I can't get in touch with him, so I, you know, try to call the second person, and again, like, very similar. I try to get on call with the data center, and the data center lines are just dead. Like, it doesn't even, like, no one's picking up, there's no, and I'm like, this is the nuclear meltdown. Like, something really terrible has happened. Um, at which point, I start to wonder if I'm being actually pranked, because the entire organization has kind of joked about how I'm going to work until the very end, like, I'm super pregnant at the time. So I'm like, they're pranking me. Like, some of this is, this is like, really heavily organized. So I'm in a cab, I do a quick task on my phone, and I realize, no, they're not pranking me, this is for real, like the environment's down, this is really happening. Um, and so I hop out of the cab, um, which is at the time that I get the first call from one of our customers. Um, being a startup, a lot of our contracts had mining as an escalation point. So whenever one of our customers was running into an issue and they weren't happy with the help that they were getting from support, or they couldn't reach support, my name and my phone number were listed right there. Uh, for those of you working in startups or wanting to work in startups, this is not a good way to have a work-life balance. You will get called in the middle of the night, some people will be very angry, you're going to have to pick up the calls. So this is, I hop out of the cab, I'm about to go into the hospital, when I get the first really angry customer call, and it's a very large organization, and this is a service they use all the time. The person is not happy, I have to tell them that, you know, we're looking into it, we're going to try to figure out, I'm going to get them a call back. Um, so over the next hour, um, I'm in touch with the data center. I finally get in touch with the data center. They tell us, yes, like uh, our uh, all inbound and outbound traffic into the data center is down. Um, and then they tell me this quite briefly, all traffic inside the data center, however, is still working. Which, for a service like ours, which relies on customers being able to reach us uh, over the internet and we rely on the service that relies on AWS, like this is really means nothing to me, right? Like, right, there's you know, traffic and data center is there, perfect. Um, so I then like continue to receive calls from uh, a lot of customers uh, and I'm sort of ducking in and out of rooms and trying to have this hospital tour, so there's sort of like hushed hush kind of environment, people trying to pay attention and I'm taking calls, it's, uh, it's really, really terrible. Uh, eventually, they figure out that this is actually, uh, this has taken uh, out a huge chunk of southern Florida. So there is a backbone down issue, and both of the, uh, um, uh, uh, the main and the backup incoming traffic into the data center are, are down, uh, as, is the as is the upstream, and it's taken out a huge part of southern Florida because the, uh, the national access uh, data center in Miami is actually down because of a blown out breaker. And so eventually someone figures this out, they, you know, they replace the breaker, the data center comes back up, uh, and then our solution, of course, like, comes back online and everything is, is hunky dory. But there's three lessons that we learned that day, and some of them are very small, and some of them are kind of like overarching large architecture lessons. The first one is we had a really extensive monitoring solution, which was in place. Um, but that monitoring solution did not fire because it was sitting right alongside those virtual machines that had no traffic. And so it was monitoring, it just couldn't let anyone know that it was, something was going wrong. So um, if you're serious about implementing monitoring for your solution, don't put it where your services, put it somewhere else, put it in a different data center, put it uh, somewhere that's like geographically away from it, so that your monitoring can actually prevent situations like this one. The second lesson was in this kind of great new world that we live in when we have this like end layer architecture that we rely on services with then in turn rely on AWS. This allows us to break that triad rule of you can have something uh, cheap or you can have it fast or you can have it of good quality, you can have two of those and not, not the three. Um, this new world that we live in actually allows you to get pretty close to having all three of those, which is an amazing time to be doing the kind of work that we do. But what we have to understand is that for each one of those, you relinquish a little bit of control. And you relinquish a little bit of your ability to fix something that's broken. In the situation that we were in, I couldn't do anything. My developers couldn't do anything, the data center couldn't do anything, the only person who could do something is like that person figured out what the blown out breaker was and had to go and replace it. Um, so that was the, the second lesson that, you know, I, I think 
it's really important to kind of remember that even though we think about redundancy very often and we really rely on the people who have redundancy very often, that's not the case. Because what had happened was the data center had ordered, you know, their main and their backup backbone connections to actually be on diverse paths. That was not what that provision. That provision was they were on the same path, and of course, when that path went down, everything got you know brought down. Um, the NAD had hoped that you know they had a replacement breaker that was going to kick in, but that didn't happen. So the redundancy there failed. So we had this like multi-layer failure that caused you know to bring our solution down. And then the third lesson that um, I learned today was that uh, when you have large enterprise customers, um, it's really hard to give them the message of there's nothing I can do. You just have to wait. So that was a really difficult message that I had to convey to some really high up people that day. Um, and they were not happy to hear it. So if you have large enterprise customers, think about that, whatever, you know, if there's going to be a day in your future where your service is going to fail, you're going to have to provide that message. Uh, of course, the dirty looks that I got that day at the hospital were nothing. You know, and they were just, the, 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 I, all of the conversations that I had that day that were really difficult customer-wise were nothing compared to the dirty looks that I got trying to duck in and out and, uh, and address the issues. So. Okay.